Hello, hello, and hello. Just wanted to um, scope quickly um, and just thank everyone who contributed to the making of this wonderful, awesome, fantastic, fantastic day that this was. I appreciate every happy birthday, every hug, every card, every gift, every... Um, just every expression of your care and your love for me uh, in this day. I appreciate it so, so much. Um, very few people uh, understand what I value and what I love. Uh, but clearly it was evident that more people than I thought did. And what I really value and my love is just uh, thoughtfulness. Because when people um, are kind, they don't have to choose you. Thank you. They don't have to choose you to be kind too. So anytime somebody goes out of their way to do anything for me, it is like a million dollars to me. And um, all of the things that I love that people don't even know that I like, clearly God um, was speaking and you all were sensitive to that. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I love cards. I got so many cards. I really... Um, appreciate every last one of them all of them were so specific and unique to uh to me i like jewelry a lot um someone made me uh hey rochella uh made me a beautiful piece of jewelry and my favorite color i love anything any shade of green and it was a beautiful tur turquoise um i got a book i love to read so um and it was a subject matter that i enjoy uh, talking about jesus Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and so uh, I got a, a jewelry holder which I needed because the one I had before broke um, and then uh, our ministry just blessed me so um, uh, the one that I am I always say take I take great delight in leading God's mm -hmm. people where did you move to I didn't even know you weren't in town anymore hey, beautiful. you've got a text but, message uh, they bless me so, and and again, something that I uh, really appreciate is when people just, you know, set aside a couple of dollars because you know people don't have to give you money, and and they they bless me. I'm going to Israel in May, and they gave me a, a nice amount of um, money for my trip, which I appreciate. You know, again, people don't have to do that, so I was so blessed. I was so blessed with the level of thoughtfulness, care, and concern. Um, that, and then they, you know, I usually cook. And so they cooked for me, which was nice, nice, nice. And they cooked all my little favorite stuff. So it was, uh, quite a blessing to be blessed today by God's people. Thank you all so much. You made this one of the best days. And somebody said something to me that was just so, oh, wow. I know that's right. You went with your baby. That's awesome. Um, and so, uh, I have been afforded. The great opportunity to to uh, um, lead this group and uh, minister to God's people and be responsible for them. And I, I appreciate shepherding the flock of Jesus Christ. It's a joy. Sometimes it's one of those moments, but it's a grace that, that, that I have been afforded that I take very seriously. Um, but yeah, they're, they're such a blessing to me and I so appreciate every moment. Because even, uh, uh, like I was telling one of them, what, I said, you know, I thought you were, you were assigned to kill me. But you, she, instead of killing me, when I tell you that girl, uh, um, developed some, some muscles and made me stronger. And, oh my God, stronger as a leader. Um, and now I appreciate it. Thanks, Mom. I love you too. And so I appreciate her. And she, she uh, is such a, a miracle to me. And never would have thought that that would have been the case uh, two years ago. But God, who is rich in mercy, has developed um, that that whole circumstance beyond. So I appreciate everybody. And somebody told me, you know, that my joy was infectious. I was like, oh, I, I tell you, I chose, I choose joy every day. I, every day is a good day. Every day. It is not a lie. I do not allow bad days ever again because this life is a blessing to me. And when it's over, it's over. So I choose that every day is going to be a great day. And if it's a, a little bump in the road, the bump got to go because we got to get to the good in the day. So, hey, Elise, how you doing? 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, I pray that my joy is continues to be infectious because I'm I'm a happy girl. I'm a happy girl. And uh, I hope that you all grow in grace and grow in joy and choose. You got to choose your joy. You got to choose your joy because when you start focusing on other stuff, it'll draw you into it. But when you choose joy and you focus on uh, the giver of life and the giver, the source of your joy, the source of your life, uh, the source of your peace, you can't help. You cannot help. You cannot help but um, have sustained and lasting joy. I mean, I always be happy, but I always, always have joy. So as I grow, my goal every day is to become sweeter and sweeter every day. I think I'm doing a fair job, pretty good job, pretty good job. I've gotten a whole lot better than I used to be. Um, There's one thing I do not like, and I, I work uh, with a lot of older people. I do not like miserable old people, mean old people, all of that kind of stuff. So I, I decided a while ago that I was going to get better and sweeter every day. I used to say every year, but, you know, every day is a choice. So I'm going to get sweeter every day, every day, every day. And, you know, it makes people upset sometimes because even when they're not exactly wonderful to me, I choose to be wonderful to them. And it's okay because it heaps a coal of fire on their head and it puts them in a position where th now they're looking crazy because it's like, why I hate her? Why I don't like her? That girl ain't did nothing to me. Oh, well, you'll be okay. I'm still going to love you. I'm still going to be good to you. And if I can't be good to you, I'm going to leave you alone. That's my choice because uh, I'm never going to do you no harm. Uh, so, again, thank you all. Bless you too, Felicia. Uh, thank you all for sharing this day with me and sharing these moments in this day. Uh, I appreciate everything, every card. Uh, I well, that's because you didn't have to live with me, Rochelle. <sniffs> I mean, I, I can't say I've ever been horrible, but I ain't always been sweet. I, I, I could be used to, could be extremely cold. Not really mean, just cold. So, you know, I... I choose not to do that anymore. Like I said, if I can't be good to you, I kind of got to step away. Um, but I, I'm not going to let anybody cause me not to be wonderful because, I mean, it's just it's just too easy being wonderful because it's so, it's so me. It's just me. So if I can't be me, I got I to gotta move, gotta move around. And I pray that you make that same choice, that you, you allow you to be you in every environment. And you were created to be wonderful. Wonderful! So, I'm going to go and continue to uh, enjoy the rest of the day um, and rest because that's the gift to myself. I'm supposed to be hanging out tomorrow and I'm actually going to force a scope tomorrow uh, while I'm hanging out because I want to. I wanted. I was trying to do it last week, but my friend was not compliant. I'm like, I don't want to be on now. <laughs> but it's my birthday. It'll be my birthday until April 27th because I celebrate one whole month of the miracle that is me because what i'm a miracle i'm a miracle so i appreciate it i'll be uh texting you mother on the 29th thanking you for my for uh for my life uh thank you for the benefit of helping produce the part the participation that you had in uh bringing me to the earth um that all the world may enjoy <laughs> so again thank you all so very much again on the 29th i'll celebrate my birthday again because to my mother my birthday is march 29th and not march 27th so i'll be pretending uh <laughs> uh i almost killed you but see but god but god um but on the 29th i'm gonna come back and before the prayer peel, which is Tuesday, I'm going to tell you all, wish me a happy birthday because it's my second birthday. Um, and I'm sure on the 29th, I'll get another message from my mother saying, happy birthday, Pooh. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to celebrate twice because that's how we do it here. Um, because I'm a double blessing. So thank you all again for all of your love. Uh, explain what? Explain why? I did this morning, but I'll do it again. Because I was, uh, uh, my mother was in great distress while she was um, in labor for forever. My dad said she was clowning so bad that he just asked the nurse, who is back there acting a fool? Because this was back in the day when the men did not go into the delivery room. 
and she was acting a plum nut so he says because my mom is not a vocal individual she's not a loud person you can really barely hear her when she talks when she answers the phone it sounds like this hello amen yes that's how she talks so to hear my mother screaming and clowning and acting a plum nut was totally not on my father's radar so when the nurse said that's your wife back there acting like that and he went back there to see what the problem was and I was in great distress and my mother was in great torment and torture and pain and she looked like somebody not herself probably like this that's probably how she looked in that moment and um you know, I, I've heard a couple of different stories about how she said, do it. You know, her voice changed and all kind of crazy stuff because they needed to do a C-section, emergency C-section, because I was all wrapped up in the umbilical cord and slowly but surely dying. Great distress. So I keep telling y'all, you know, they've been trying to kill me from day one. But the Lord put a fight on the inside of me that is undeniable. I'm a fighter for real. When somebody tells me no or tries to snuff out any aspect of life in me, when I tell you it is so on, it is so on. I have to make myself stop fighting sometimes um, so that God can advance. And uh, because it's just, it's in me to fight. And so anyway, so she ended up having this C-section. And in the process of me coming forth and, um, uh, uh, you know, being me, being alive, on the outside of the womb, uh, then she was almost, <laughs> right, uh, then she was almost taken out, snuffed out in the process, and so she didn't wake up until the 29th, I was born March 27th, 1981, she didn't wake up until the 29th, uh, my birth certificate had a little snafu on it for a little while, and um, since then, she cannot for the life of her get the correct day of my birthday unless she is told so I usually get um, some sort of acknowledgement on March 29th very excited and it's very funny because it's hey happy birthday Pooh and it's like two days ago yeah two days ago and it's like I do that every year yeah yeah 34 times 35 times really yeah, but at this point, I just expect it. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. So, um, now I expect it. And I think one year I didn't get it. I got it on the 27th, and I was a little disappointed. Like, no, hang up and call me. Thank you. And thank you for make, doing the scope and wishing me happy birthday on your scope. I appreciate that. Um, so, yeah, I told her, don't, don't call me on my birthday. Call me on my other birthday. Because it just kind of threw me off. But, yeah, I appreciate it. Now, I, you know, I take every day. I'll take every day, every day, because, you know, you know, God only made one of us, and he only made one of you. Thank you, Shanika. He made one of me, and he made one of you, and, you know, so we're a necessity to the earth. We are, that's why I always say we're a solution, a unique, uh, yes, it is my birthday. Um, we are a unique solution, a unique solution. My This birthday was amazing. It was absolutely wonderful. I, I can't compare it to anything else, uh, and I can't. I can't say that, you know, all these uh, huge, fantastic things. It was just, you know, it was just a joy. It was a great joy today that is uh, not not to be compared to any, to any other birthday I've ever experienced. Thank you! I, girl, it's the light. That's what you see glowing. <laughs> it's the light! Uh, but, you know, maybe, I don't know, I don't know if I don't see what everybody else sees, but, you know, everybody keeps telling me, yeah, yeah, girl, your joy is infectious, it's infectious, it's infectious, it's like, okay, I'll take it, this joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me, I keep telling y'all, it costs me something, it costs me something, so I, okay, I appreciate it, I do, I, I, when well, I tell you, there's nothing I would change, nothing I would change about where I am in this moment, who I am, how I am, wouldn't take nothing for my journey now. Everything was worth it. It was worth it. And it's only getting ready to get bigger and better. Um, because it, it ain't even about me. It ain't even about me. So everything good that I am, I'm appointed back to the king anyway because it's his. So I look forward to it. Can't believe I've known you since you're... Yes! Yes! 
Ah! Okay. <laughs> yes, Miss Ferguson, you have known me. I think since I was like 12. Or, no, I was about 13. About 13 or 14. Yep, so it's been a long time. 30, 35 now. I gotta stop saying 34. 35 now. I'm halfway to 40. I'm just happy I don't look like it. I told somebody the other day I was almost 35. And she said, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Because she had asked me how long I had been doing what I've been doing. I said, it'll be 22 years this July. And she said, I thought you were about 24. How old are you? <laughs> what I told her, she uh, she tickled me. So she said, oh my God, oh my God, you look so wonderful. And I always say, oh, it's, you know, it's my good jeans. It's my good West Indian jeans. We age beautifully. Because my mama is over 60. I don't want to tell all your business, but has the most perfect skin on this side of America. Has zero wrinkles on her whole face. I can't say that I got a wrinkle there. Well, it's a crease, not a wrinkle. I got a crease there and a crease there. And a crease there from smiling. See? That's my smile stuff. I take those. But the rest of them can't, they can't set up root on my face. You can't remember your 30s? Oh, I'm just, I'm living a dream. I'm living the dream. And I'm determined to remember every year. 30, 30 was wonderful. 31, not so great. 32, not so great. 33, 34 was, eh. 34 was, 34 was good. 35 is about to get like, oh my God. That's how 34 plus is going to be. Oh my God. That's, that's how it's going to be. Okay, so I said, <laughs> go ahead. You do it, girl. Do it. Do it. Do it. So it's a... <laughs> It's a blessing to be able to, uh, yeah, that's what he's going to do. He's going to blow our mind. He's going to blow our mind. And I look forward to the journey. And you all to be able to uh, go with me on this journey because I, I plan on periscoping as long as possible. And um, you all to be able to watch life unfold. So, and I, I pray that, you know, I get an opportunity to see you you all uh, get your mind blown and your lives, your lives um, emerge into great great places to do great things um for the lord for the earth for his people um because that's what we're here for we're, we're here to again to be a solution and to 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 advance his uh, amen and to uh, be a part of some some kingdom stuff on every level even in your personal lives i just pray that god blows your mind on every level so i guess we've chatted now a little while I thank you all again for everything, for everything that you all have done. I'll be back tomorrow. I plan on, um, oh, I was supposed to give the, the prayer call number two. Uh, I plan on, uh, oh, it wasn't, you ain't missed much. Uh, I plan on, um, uh, oh, trying, I'm going to attempt to be early, about 830 or so, is my goal. If I don't make it, no pressure. Um, it's my goal for tomorrow because that's about the time eight, between 8.15 and 8.30 is my, my aim every day. Um, now, I'm going to try 8.15, 8.30 because I need to get up and out. And then um, I'm supposed to be hanging out in the afternoon, continuing to be celebrated. So uh, the conference call tomorrow is still at 5. Nope, it's not 5.30. It's 6 o'clock, Mondays and Wednesday. Um, the number is 712 770-4010. 712-770-4010. Access code 181-967. And if you um, cannot be up or d just don't want to, thank you, girl, uh, and just don't want to get up that early, you can call and listen to the playback Um Anytime. It's it's the same except the last number is a nine. So it's seven one two seven seven zero four zero one nine. Um and the same access code one eight one nine six seven. Yep. So hey, beautiful. You've got a I'm out of here. I'm gonna wash my face, pin curl my hair, because it was really cute earlier, especially with my little high collar thing I had. And this this little non permed hair is actually doing pretty good. Thank you. So, I'm going to get my life together so I can be cute another day. Another day. Do we have Bible study tomorrow?
when you walked in. I told Jackie, look at me. Oh, <laughs> I was looking for, okay, I didn't know because, you know, they do stuff sometimes. Um, girl, yeah. Mm -hmm. People still pick girl. Yeah, child. Yeah, they do. Um, I was looking for um, for Jackie. I saw you when you when you uh, moved around. Yeah, they are. Now, the ones on the side, I can't do because I, I still use the little rod things for those. Because um, I can't see. I can't see the side too well to be able to do that. But this front piece here, it doesn't act right unless I pin curl it. So I pin curl this and I pin curl this and this. All of this I pin curl. The rest of this I ride. And I try to do try to do that. And then after about a week of that, I get sick of looking at it like this. And then I wrap it up and it starts kind of waving down. It looks cute. It gave me a two-week hairdo. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, I can't. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Another product of good genes. My parents have beautiful hair. So I appreciate them. I appreciate it. Um, um, the way I do it. Shoot, I just do that. I just do that. And then put the little thing right there. And then do that. It ain't nothing to it. But that's probably why I can't really do the side. Because I can't see. I can't see that well on the side. But I would imagine you kind of just do the same. And then just do that. You know, taking, of course, smooth it out. Comb it out so that it's a more defined curl. And do that. Now, I can pin curl somebody else's hair a whole lot better than I can mine. But those angles and curves. and So I just still ride the back and pin curl the front. But it's super easy. And it's so much easier to sleep on. So much easier to sleep on than a, than a roller. Uh, but yeah, that's been my night. How was your Easter? I, let me not be one-sided. Oops. Did you all have a wonderful... I did, did I say Easter? That's see. That's the culture. I'm being contaminated by the culture. Sweet Jesus. How was y'all Resurrection Sunday? Yep, my daddy gonna talk about me. Always putting that chapstick on, on that doggone periscope. Yep, my lips is dry. It was awesome. I'm so glad. Miss Ferguson, you still live in Chicago or you, you moved away too? Did you? Yes, you did. You took your baby some balloons. You did something. Oh, you in Lansing. So you down the street from me. You right down the street from me. Home food nap. Hey, now, nah, Shanika, that's a good Sunday. Yes, it is. Yes, I, I haven't seen one of those Sundays. Oh, okay, okay. So you over there with Angie? Okay. You know, Angie is doing our um. She's doing the worship for our women's conference coming up in October. So I hope I hope you're able to to come on and um and enjoy. What God is going to do. That's going to be amazing. 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 I'm so excited about it. Um, you can look on Eventbrite. And. Um, and. Um, oh, okay. And. Um, search. 360 Women's Conference. It's under Kingdom Daughters. And Resurrection. Restoration. Mm. Look under Kingdom Daughters. Resurrection Life. Yes, went got grandbaby crap on his money birthday back home all day. Okay. I I couldn't tell you the last time I had a off Sunday off day period, but off Sunday especially. Not that I want one. I'm I'm I love my church and I love my um I love the ministry that God has blessed me to lead. I love love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. But they told me today to take take a break just because I'm like um, I'm at Tristone. Tristone Full Gospel Baptist Church of Chicago. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. It had the nerve to hold his head at one point. I was like, really? Really? You just gonna hold you gonna hold your head like 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 that while you're preaching? That's how you feeling today? Yeah, he did. 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 Yeah, I wasn't ready for that. I'm gonna tell you the truth. I was like, okay, we're gonna get a real nice Easter word today. When he got up there and said, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to remember this for all the days of my life. When he got up there today, this morning, this fine, March 27, 2016, uh, I didn't periscope him. 
Um, but I did record it on my phone because I'm a processor, so I have to chew on it for a while. Um, but he got up there today and he said when, when Jesus gave up the ghost, we got him. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was so cool because that was one of the things that I was teaching on this afternoon. It was about the pneuma, the spirit of God, the wind of God, the breath of God. And uh, I was like, oh, oh, oh. That's how I felt all on the inside. And I think I did that. I think I did that. I think I did, but by then it was so it was so loud in there, so nobody heard me. And, and even if they did, who cares? But <laughs> it was so good, though. It, it was it was good. It was really good. Yes, you will have to visit. We we don't steal people away from where they're assigned to be, but we show we show. Uh, I think I did. I think I did. I think I did. Because at that point, I was like, look, I just can't. I surrender. But we'll love you to life. That's one of the things that, that um, shocked me uh, when I first uh, uh, came to to uh, try. So I know I was right behind you. I touched I touched you on your shoulder. Um, that that how how warm the people were because I've been I'm a church baby. I always tease and say I was born on the back pew because I've been in church my whole entire life, my whole life in church. But I like it. But I've never been in an environment where the people were just um, so just lovely. Just lovely people. Lovely people. Everybody got issues. Sure they do. But just genuinely loving. They're never gone into an environment. And y'all know I'm shiny. So no matter how I try to send it back in the corner, I'm shiny. So after a while, it doesn't work. And generally, when I walk in the door of a new environment, I get this. And I didn't get that. I got, how you do? Actually, I got uh, Elder Tina in the pulpit talking about some, is your name Kim? Like, really? Really? You just gonna, you just gonna bust me out walking through the door? I, I don't even know, I, I don't even know nobody named Kim. I don't even know nobody named Kim. And then after that, I was never able to hide. So, but yeah, I've been at Tristone now for, um, since last August. Since last August. And I, I'm, I'm happy, 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 happy to be there. Happy to be there. There's no place like home. I'm clacking my heels. Y'all can't see my feet, but there's no place like home. There's no place like home. So, yeah, y'all know I'm funny. I'm, I have my own brand of, of humor. <sighs> and I like it. It keeps me laughing. I'm glad. I'm glad I'm able to share my joy. So, uh, so yeah, I think everybody told me they had a great day. A great uh, resurrection Sunday. Uh, if you didn't tell me, tell me how your, your resurrection Sunday were, was. I think she on here. She was on here earlier. It's uh, She's on here. It's uh, something Buckman, I think. Or Buchanan or something, something like that. It's a B. Not great with that one. Um, I, I think it's Buckman. I think it's Buckman. Yeah, there you go. There you go. There she is, Miss Ferguson. She's over there laughing at her daughter. Who's a riot? And I'm not even trying. I'm just being me because cause I'm shiny. I'm shiny. Maybe it's the glow that's making me funny. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but nevertheless, yeah, I don't know what KMSL means. This, this, this new. I'm glad you all had a wonderful day. Uh, all of my family, my Periscope family, and uh, my real family, and my Tridstone family, and my Old Valley family. Glad you all had a great.
great. I'm trying to think of if, if it was anything else to say because sometimes I get off these periscopes and it's like, I was supposed to say something. But I can't think of anything just yet. Y'all see my earrings? Jackie made me a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful necklace. And I had some earrings. That's probably because I'm. talking to I do uh, it thank you she bought me I should go in there and get it but my room looks like a cyclone but it matches and I've had these earrings for a hundred years and never worn because it was like I don't think I have anything that that'll look right with and as soon as I said oh my goodness and it was a, a, the color that I love I love any shade of green and it was uh, turquoise and then it had these little things this kind of little what do you call it in, in between um, so I was like, hey, and, um, so go, okay, I'll go get it. Um, uh, uh, um, I said I was going to pull up her too, because I didn't know Jackie made jewelry. And so she told me to look on her Facebook page and, oh my goodness, you talking about some beautiful, beautiful pieces. I said, girl, you going to get me in trouble. I'm trying to. I'm saving for this move and saving for, hey, Elder Tina, and saving for, um, this was my jewelry thing, Elder Tina got me, that I already have loaded up. I'm not going to show y'all my closet because it's just ignorant. Uh, let me see if I can turn it around. Uh-oh, I just showed y'all my closet. See, I'm already starting to load it up. I got so much of everything. Um, <laughs> This is my... I'm, I'm going to take this out of my bedroom because this is my boudoir. This is the holy place. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't know if Jackie ships. So I'm, I'm going to turn it around and I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that nice? This is my house shoe. Don't look at my house shoe. Okay. That's what Jackie made me. She made this. Isn't that nice? And you see the little thing right there? It matches the earrings that I have on that I had never worn before. Uh-oh. Turn it around. So, see? Matches the earrings. Didn't even know. And then, um, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, and then um, you can look her up on Facebook, Jackie Husky, H-U-S-K-E-Y. Beautiful stuff. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Beautiful stuff. And then um, Dr. Paris gave me a book. Y'all know I am a book junkie. I'm an information junkie. And this is the book. We were actually talking about it the other day. And she said, I'm going to give you my book. And she did. That's her book. See, see, that's the book by Elder Dr. Paris Davis. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Thank you! So that's the book, so I'm going to start chewing on that real soon. And yeah, and then like I said, the the KD group gave me, that's because the, the, the phone is janky. That's why it's freezing. The phone is janky. Yes, and then I got a song sang to me that was hilariously funny first thing in the morning i woke up i said lord who is this at the 6 59 a.m don't they know that i can't i just can't this early in the morning and it was elder tina singing uh uh stevie wonder her rendition of stevie wonder's uh happy birthday with the remix personalized quite funny quite funny so i have been wonderfully celebrated today Wonderfully celebrated. Wonderfully celebrated. And then promised some some uh some fish, some fried fish. My it's it's I tell y'all it's the janky phone. Okay, let me try to put you back on the internet. Hold on. Wait for it. Wait for it. Okay, is it frozen now? Is this better? Are we still freezing? Are we still freezing? Is that better? 
I turned, I turned, not had. I turned it, I turned, tried, one more time for the Holy Ghost. I, I turned off the uh, internet and turned on the data just to kind of try something. It didn't work. It didn't work. It didn't work. So I just turned it back onto the internet. You didn't miss a thing. I was trying to figure out why it was freezing. Um, so yeah, that's it. Oh, and then I got cupcakes, which I couldn't eat. But they were really pretty, Brenda. Brenda brought me. Yeah, the song was great. The song was great. Um, and uh, Brenda brought cupcakes to uh, the ministry. And they loved the cupcakes. I couldn't eat the cupcakes because I don't do sugar too well. Um, plus, I had a cookie or two yesterday. No, I didn't have a cookie. I had a turtle or two yesterday. And then I had, um, yes, I'm going to eat some vegan cheese. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we did eat turtles yesterday. You were my witness. And I, and let me tell y'all what I did. So let me tell y'all. So I had this, uh, clients always bring me stuff. Stuff I have no business ever having. Stuff that I think is probably theirs and they're trying to shovel it off to me because they know they don't have any business eating it. So they're going to give it to me because it's like, she little, she can eat it. It's like you're trying to give me 12 stomachs. Anybody got time for that? Um, but I did indulge. Yes, I did. I did indulge in the, um, no, I don't diet. Never. I haven't dieted since I, since I turned my life over to Jesus. I don't diet. But I do, um, um, I do uh, watch. I am watch. I, I scoped about that. And I actually was inspired by your 94-pound weight loss. I scoped a while ago. About um, how I had lost 50 pounds in 2007 and um, the process that it took from going up and down and up and down and up and down and up and down to finally uh, living and enjoying this, this gift of this body. And it wasn't, um, I'm limited as it pertains to what I can do physically uh, because of my um, lower half of my right side. Um, yeah. So it's like, you know, I can walk and that's about it. But, um, yeah, so it was really, you know, just me asking the Lord, okay, God, you you, uh, you made this body. Show me how to live in it the way that you designed it to be because this is your temple. And so since you live here, I want you to be comfortable where you live. And I want to be comfortable where I live. And so um, he just kind of over time showed me how to eat and daily shows me what how to eat and what to eat and when to eat and you know, he's kind of taught me my little triggers um, and all of that kind of stuff. Um, I learned over time that when I am distressed uh, or something is bothering me, I don't have an I don't um, I don't have an appetite. I don't you know I don't have really have a choice about eating often because I don't have a great capacity um, when it comes to food um, because I probably maybe about the third grade or so. If I eat too much, it's not going to stay down. So, you know, um, I can eat. I have to eat. Just, so, you know, kind of nibble here, nibble there. Um, generally eat on a saucer. If I eat a whole plate of food, not good. And not just because um, that's the way they say you're supposed to eat. But that's that's the way my body is designed. I can literally. Uh, amen. we Will do. we Will do. Um, I literally have to, um, I can feel when I've had enough and because I start getting nauseous at the thought of eating another bite. So that kind of, you know, I had to learn too, that when I am happy and feeling good, which is generally the opposite of most people, that's when I have this insatiable appetite. I want to eat everything I see when everything is going great. It's like, you know, I'm happy all is well. And so now that I know that my inclinations I have to be mindful um, of those things and uh, have balance, you know. And then, then those are the moments where it's like, okay, God, this is what I want to eat. Can I eat this? This is what, you know. So, you know, I, I don't I don't not eat anything, um, but I really don't. I don't really eat a whole lot of meat because at this point, I really don't like it. I don't really want it. Hey, um, you've got a text message. But... I am a carb queen. I did. When I tell y'all I had great, great, great amounts of french fries this week. Great amount, amounts of french fries. Because that's my, I always say that's my love language. 
French fries, that's my love language. You want me to love you to the, for the rest of your life? Bring me a bag of French fries. Do it. And then if you really, just really, just really, really want me to be in love, put some cheese. Put a cup of cheese in there. Put a cup of cheese in there and you got me. It's like that's all it takes. French fries and then every now and then I can dip one in some cheese. And it's like really? That's all it takes. I'm easy to please. Bag of fries and some cheese. It's that simple. I just told y'all all, all my, my secret. So yeah, this week, my week of celebration, I had great amounts of french fries. Thank you, girl. Thank you. Monday, I went out with my friend, and we had, um, we went to Angry Crab. If you like seafood, and I'm not a big seafood eater, ooh, yes, God. We had uh, crab legs and mussels and... And shrimp. Not a big shrimp eater unless it's mixed up in some pasta. Um, but yeah, I had crab legs, mussels, shrimp. And what did he buy me? A big old basket of garlic and Cajun french fries. And I had to ask him, I hope you didn't want none of these because I'm about to eat all of these. And I ate the what? The whole basket. The whole basket of fries. And I was so blessed by it. Has, has a basket of french fries ever blessed anybody but me? It blessed me. It blessed me. Yes, it did. It blessed me. Because that's my love language, french fries. So I had french fries, a basket Monday, and then um, I think every day. I see Brenda high five to you. That's my high five. I was blessed by a basket of Cajun garlic french fries. It was anointed. Whoever shook, uh, shook, boom, that's what it is. Whoever shook the seasoning on there, their hand, they had anointed their hands with oil before they started shaking. And it was, it was greatly multiplied. It was, it was, it was a ministry. It was a ministry unto the Lord. And I received every minute of it. I was blessed by it. And, um, yeah. So, yeah, that's, that's my thing. So, I, I just, I have to, uh. I have to be cautious because I, I don't I don't contain very well um, food, large amounts of food. And when I'm done, I'm done. And my friend sure, surely told me, that's your thing, Dunkin' Donuts, donuts Coffee in the Donut. I go in waves when it comes to stuff like that. Because really, I don't want the donut. I just want the bread on the inside of the donut, which is what I discovered. I don't really like the sweet parts. I just want the bready parts. I like I like the carbs. Not the, not the for real sweet carbs i like the dough carbs like white rice i know it's the devil i know it's the devil i know it's the devil but i like white rice not brown rice and i like um bread of any kind if you give me a loaf of bread you won't see it anymore and i like uh rolls and i like french fries and i like um if you put it under a carb, pasta, yep, mm -hmm, pasta, yep, and I don't even need sauce because I don't like tomatoes, and I ain't real big on milk, so I can take a leave depending on what kind of Alfredo sauce it is. It is the devil, yeah, and um, mm -hmm. and uh, um, I can just do a little. Now this sounds bad. This sounds bad. That's why I don't do this anymore. I could used to. I could do just um a little butter. And just a pinch of salt, because I ain't big on salt either, just to make sure that it's right. And then mix it together. Yep, and I eat a whole plate of spaghetti. And then be sick later, because it was too much. But it just get good to you. It do. It, I know that's not uh, grammatically correct. But it gets good to you. It, it, gets, it gets good to you. It gets good to you. So, I was saying that to say, yeah, so now I have to uh, to do better. And so, for me, what has helped me, again, beyond just asking the Lord and listening and obeying, uh, but it's also not to buy it. If I don't buy it, I can't eat what I don't have. And to buy things, um, I love fruits and vegetables. Always have loved vegetables. But my issue with vegetables is it spoils too fast. And because I don't have a huge appetite... Um, and can't eat really large quantities, you know, I don't, I can't eat it. So it goes bad. And if you want to see what you want to know what my anti love language is, waste my money. I'm going to give you the side eye. Waste my money. And we're going to fall out. So, uh, I don't even know what that is. What's a Debbie Meyer green bag? I don't know what that is. 
And I shop in Indiana because I'm on state line. So tax-free groceries is my portion. Um, but I don't know what a Debbie Meyer green bag is. But I love vegetables. And I, I am a, um, a texture eater. So I like raw foods a lot. I like raw vegetables and things like that. Oh, never heard of it. Never heard of it. Um, so I have to. I end up usually going to the grocery store at least once a week, if not more, uh, just for the sake of making sure that I eat what I like. Because I've always had a really good palate. We used to have growing up. At, uh, my mom's gonna probably laugh at me saying this. Um, every Tuesday night, we, it was called Matlock Night because me, my my mom, my dad, and my brother, we will watch uh, Matlock and Dallas and Falcon Crest. Mm -hmm. as a family and everybody got the opportunity we would go to the grocery store and everybody got the opportunity to get a junk food that they liked my brother would get some form of nonsense because everybody's a sweet eater in the family but me um my brother would get something super duper sweet my mother would usually get oatmeal cookies archway oatmeal cookies and my dad would get some ignorant mess like some you want to hear a nasty combination he would get like Doritos with hot sauce or Lay's chips with hot sauce and then have the chocolate hostess cupcakes and chocolate milk and eat all that together nasty and um me what would I get baby carrots and red cabbage at seven because I like raw vegetables and so having said that they would say what is wrong with you you're the only kid that I know that is getting baby carrots and red cabbage when you have the opportunity to get any piece of grocery in this store. And I'm like, I'm good. I'll just have red cabbage. Don't cook it. Just slice it. So, and I still love red cabbage and, and stuff. Um, but, you know, I got contaminated by the nonsense, peer pressure. And eventually I started, you know, eating potato chips and stuff. And I, I don't even like them. It's just like, oh, they're here. Eat them. Um, so I had to untrain myself and retrain myself to eat what I really liked, which is I love raw vegetables. So, yeah, that was that. And then as a result, lost a lot of weight. And, um, you know, I am the size that I am now, which I don't know how much I weigh. Don't really care. Um, not even quite sure as to the size I wear because long as it fits and it's not tugging or pulling you know I always say you know you know your clothes too tight when you take them off and you got a, a imprint I'm a blank too tight too tight too tight your pants are too tight when you have a an imprint around your waist when you take them off they're what they're too tight they're too tight your shirt is too tight when the, the pieces that's supposed to be sitting on top of each other, I like this. Around where the, you know, the bust goes. If they popped open like this and the, 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 um, what do you call it? The button is, is, is the little hoop that the button is doing like this. Trying to hang on. It's too tight. It's too tight. Get some clothes that fit. That's not, God ain't pleased. He ain't pleased with that. He don't want no parts of that. He don't want no parts of that. He don't want to He said he'll never leave you or forsake you, but I bet you he like this. Because he, you know, it's like, that's too tight. That's too tight. So, you know, clothes look better when they fit, when the cut and the fit is um, is specific to, to not only your size. I know, right? Not only your size, but um, to your shape. Dress according to your shape. It, it, it should be a compliment. Um not only to what you your, what you have on should not only compliment you um, in appearance, but it should compliment who you are on the inside. It should be a direct reflection of the wonderful person that God has created you to be. It should. It should. It should be an exclamation point to a wonderful sentence. Yep. But again, if you're wearing it and or it's wearing you or, you know, some people just don't know any better. They do what they see other people doing until they figure some stuff out. But if it's too tight, don't do it. Don't do it. Give it, give it a break. Give it a break and pass it on to somebody who it'll be a blessing to because it's not blessing you. It's not. It's not. It's not blessing you. It's not blessing you. Let it bless you. So I'm going to go for real now because I really do need to. 
um, pin curl this thing and wash this face of mine. Um, yeah, I've had a ball with you all. Thanks for uh, rounding out the, the latter end of my birthday with me. Do something great this evening. I hope your um, the rest of your week begins with joy. Like I always say, hope today meets you with joy. And I hope it ends on the same note. Hope you smile yourself to sleep like this. That's what I hope you do tonight. Smile yourself to sleep. Find something to be uh, happy about. Uh, amen. It should be. Sometimes it's not. I've met some wonderful people who just did not know what to do with their attire. They don't know. They just don't know. Somebody got to help them. So that's actually one of the classes at the women's um, conference to come. So we're going we're talk, we're going to show you how to um, develop a style that is not only unique to uh, who you are, um, but specific to your body, your body type, and um, the look that you really are attempting to go after. Because if you ask a person, and this is this is what I do for a living, so I'm not speculating. Um, if you ask somebody, what what is it when I do closet makeovers or um, consultations uh, um, about you know people what they want to do with their attire? I always ask. So what do you want the world to see? Uh, be First impression. What do you want the world to see? And what do you want your look to say? I guarantee you somebody who is dressing inappropriately is not going to say, oh, I want to look like, I want to look cheap and I want to look trifling and I want to look like I buy my clothes uh, out of, you know, the five and that. Nobody wants to look bad. They don't know. They don't know. So they need help. So there is a, uh, God has anointed me. To um, help people get, that, get get their looks together. Um, and a lot of times it's leading by example. And people will take that the wrong way sometimes. But oh well. Um, and they'll say, oh she's just doing too much. Oh she's too this and she's too that. But I, I like it. It pleases God. It makes him look good. And it makes me feel like the person that I know I am. So, and what? Um, but a lot of times people don't know. People don't know because they don't know. Somebody has to help them. And if you, in a non-judgmental way, kind of navigate people um, to a place where they see. Like if you ever watch, I don't even know the name of that show, where they kind of make you over when you look bad and they put you in that room with that mirror. That mirror that's got a demon that shows you stuff that you like. Who put that extra fat on my back? I didn't know that thing was there. That that mirror. Um, they always you very rarely. The few times I've seen it, I've never seen anybody at the end say, "I hate it, I hate it," and go back to their old look. People don't know. They don't know um, that you can have um, <laughs> that you can have um, a balance where your creativity and your personality and your own style can be expressed without going. In a direction, and we all, we all, we all have had moments. I think about some of the stuff I used to wear while I was trying to find my style. I've been trying to find my style since I was what three. So, um, right, I have. Anybody that knows me will tell you I have been carrying a purse and wearing pearls forever. I actually almost got a beating. Well, I didn't get beat. I almost, I know I got in trouble because. My mom, told, it was a picture day, and my mother put some clothes out, and it was like, okay. And so, I put on all this other stuff, because I'm a, a, an accessory queen, have, have always been. And I put on some pearls and some other stuff, and my mother, when I came out the room, i had never forget, I had my hair to the side, and I've always had longer hair. And so, I had um, a ponytail like to the side, and the back of my hair was down, because it was picture day. And you know you can only wear your hair down on... Resurrection Sunday, maybe Christmas service, picture day, and your birthday. That was it. So my head was down in the back. And I had the ponytail to the side. And I put this clip on the ponytail. Because what? I'm shiny. And she said, where are you going with all that on? And I said, I'm going to school. Now, I always wore dresses to school. The only kid in America that wore dresses with, they, I wore my church clothes to, to school. Because I liked it. I like the way I felt when I was in my church clothes. And so I always had a purse since I was three. And my, my aunt used to just say, Wendy, where are you going? And I'm like, I'm going to school. 
And she's like, you going with stockings on? Yes, I'm going to school with stockings on. I'm a lady. Yeah, that was me. So anyway, she told me to take it off. And I said, okay, because, you know, I'm obedient. I've always been an obedient child. And I took it off like she told me to. And I did what? I put it in my purse. And when I got to school, I put it back on for my pictures. Yes, I did. But see, I hadn't thought out my plan very well because I forgot that the evidence of me putting it back on was going to be in the pictures. So when the pictures came, now I told y'all a piece of it. So the, the dress was already busy. It was like, if you can imagine, like the um, ladies on the, what do you call it? The, um, the uh, Nina Pinta and the Santa Maria. What you call that? The... Um, what are you calling people that had the little shoes on? The Quaker people. It'll come to me. Um, them people. The dress was kind of like that. And so it had the like the little flaps on the side. And it was a long dress. And the, the background of it was black. But it had paisleys. Always like paisleys. It had paisleys on it. And the paisleys were like purple and black. And like a little bit of white. And some turquoise. And so it was busy, 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 busy dress, busy dress. And I had the audacity to put some pearls on it, which wasn't too bad. But then I put some seashell earrings, some dangling seashell earrings on next to it. And in my mind, it matched because the color was about the same as the necklace. So imagine, busy dress with all these colors, the black and the purple and the black, purple, turquoise, and a little bit of white. Uh huh. And I had a, 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 a necklace, a, a because I always wore pearls. Because that's what ladies wore. And then I had my seashell earrings. It was a cluster of little seashells that dangled. Mm -hmm. And then this thing that I had in my hair. Where my hair was to the side. And I had my long ponytail. And I think it had little spirals in the ponytail. I thought it was so cute. And I imagine this face. Because I've looked the same forever and ever. And um, this ponytail on the side. And the clip that I had on was like a rectangle. And it was what? It was velvet. And it had rope like a quilted rope on top uh yep and so i had that all of that all of that on all of that on all at the same time with some sort some sort of um what do you call that some sort of um probably a patent leather shoe because that's how i rolled with my patent leather shoes on and um yeah i was just too cute for the world and so when my mama saw the picture I just, you know, about then, my brain caught up with my shenanigans. And I was like, I'm going to die now. She's going to kill me. She's going to do it. Yes, she is. And she did. She looked at me and she said, mm, why did you do this? And I said, well, um, I don't know. And she said, well, you know what? These are your pictures. You're going to remember this forever. And it took my eye. I was 21. To see that picture and say, who let this girl care? Oh, and I wore glasses. No, I didn't. I didn't have glasses on then. I, I took them off for the pictures because I've been wearing glasses since the first grade. But imagine all of that going on and some red, little red round glasses. You couldn't have, tell, you couldn't have told me I wasn't shy. I don't know if I have that picture. I think my daddy got all the pictures because my father is a picture hoarder. And so he stole now he's still he took all of the pictures and he has all of the pictures um somewhere somewhere but i'm gonna show y'all a picture of myself because i want you all to understand from whence i have come oh wait a minute hold on i got the picture open the thing and show enough show enough show enough is in here on the top see look at god see god wants you to share your foolishness he wants you to share he wants you to share your foolishness he wants you to share your foolishness. Watch so y'all see this picture. Y'all promise y'all ain't going to tell nobody? I'm going to delete this after I'm done with this. Because the world is not going to know that this is how I was rolling. Look at this girl. Look at this girl. Look at this girl. Look at that girl. Pearls. Cluster. Curly ponytail. Did I? Did I lie? I tell y'all I don't lie. I may do a whole lot of stuff. But Wendy don't lie. We ain't gonna lie. We ain't gonna, she ain't gonna tell no stories. I'm gonna show you again. Child, look at me. Child, look at me. Child, look at me. Pearls. Bam. 
earrings. Bam. And then my mama had that hair curled up to half the length. So yeah, I still got the same face. Same face. Same face. Same. All of it. Now y'all can't see. My uh, thing went out. I'm not using the bathroom. I'm just in the bathroom. Okay. And then this is my grandmama. This is where I get my some of my good looks. That's my grandmama. Does she look like me? Does she look like me? Ain't she crew? Yep, that was me. That was me, honey. Let me see if I find anything else that looks funny. Uh, I've looked the same forever. I see. I told you I was doing a whole lot. I was trying to. I was trying to find my own personal style. Tell him this is what you go through when you have girls. See, he he was able to override that because he didn't have any daughters that he had to deal with that nonsense on. Cause I was doing what I was trying to find my style. But that's the kind of stuff. See things like that when I see myself or and remind myself. <laughs> I did. I found my style. Finally, it took a few snafus. I tell you, I remember some of the stuff I used to wear. So, somebody years ago made this, made me and my mother, see, they, they, they was trying to be funny, made me and my mother this reversible, um, uh, it was a long skirt and a vest. And we used to wear it with cowboy boots. Now, this was in the middle of me losing weight. So, you'll get a chance to see. I was a little chunkier. That's me right here. These are all the beautiful ladies. These are my cousins. Uh, Y'all see how long my nails used to be? Look at my nails. Those are all my nails. That's why when people say, oh, my God, your nails are so long. It's like you ain't seen nothing yet. That was me. I was probably about maybe 30 pounds heavier. You can see it in my face. That was me before I... Stop eating the whole thing. Y'all know my daddy ignorant. So he told me before he moved back to Chicago. Uh, he said, I know why you know all the good restaurants. Because anytime you come back in town, he would say, we want to go so-and-so place. Or we, we want to eat so-and-so kind of food. Where should we go, Pumpkin? And I would say, oh, go here and eat there. He did. He told me, he said, I know why you know all the good restaurants. Because you, you ate the whole thing, didn't you? You ate all of it. I was like, really? That's how you're going to talk to your daughter? That's that's. You better be glad I don't have issues with self-esteem because you would have just crushed me. But at that point, it was like, I mean, I know I'm, I know I'm thickalicious. This was me again before I lost the weight. That was me on my, my first cruise. Yeah, all of that is me. All of that is me. That's my, that's my top stomach. That's my bottom stomach. That's my first chin. That's my second chin. And then my third chin is hiding under that. That's the little weight of man. That wasn't no, I, I didn't. I didn't. That's me. All of me. That's that's me. Yep, that's me. That's me. That's me. Before I gave my life to Jesus. <laughs> was cute this is me too this is another chunky girl picture